Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. I'm Eric and today we got a quick look of the Sire T7 FM in transparent blue. So I've had a lot of viewers uh, reach out and, you know, ask me to take a look at a sire, uh, you know, tell me, you, you know, you should make a video on a sire. So um, I've checked them out and I like the looks of the T7 FM here. So that's what we ended up with. hardware uh, we'll get to that in a minute uh, but let's start off by taking a look at the woods uh, mine has a uh, two-piece alder body and it's got a flame maple veneer and it has a roasted maple neck with a roasted maple fretboard and the radius of the fretboard is 9.5 <laughs> So the neck features a real bone nut, which is nice to see on this guitar. Uh, the frets are medium jumbo. They're pretty good size uh, frets. And gang, I got to mention uh, the fret work on this guitar uh, is really, really nice. Um, it's nice to see, you know, on a guitar made in Indonesia, which is where these are made. It's nice to see fret work that nice. And I know a lot of people that you know, have checked out our guitars, you know, you'll notice uh, there's like a trend. Everybody seems to rave about their fret work and, the, you know, the fret job on, on these guitars. And, you know, now I understand what they're talking about. Um, the fret ends are super. Uh, they were all level, you know, when you check them with a fret rocker, you know, no, no high spots or anything like that. And the, the, the fret job in combination with the way that Sire, you know, rolls the fretboard edges just really, really makes a super, super nice neck. Very, very comfortable. Uh, really impressed with the neck on this guitar. <laughs> Let's move down, you know, to the hardware on the guitar. Like I mentioned earlier, mine has black hardware. Um, now, I lived with the guitar for a little while, you know, with the original chrome hardware. And please hear me, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the original hardware on the guitar. The, you know, the original bridge seems really, really nice. Uh, the original locking tuners seem fine. Um, that being said, I kind of went into this, um, you know, thinking I was going to put black hardware on it. You guys who have seen my, you know, my video about my Ibanez AZ, you know, Move Premium AZ, um, no, I put black hardware on that, and I really, really liked the way that looked. So going into this one, I pretty much kind of wanted to do the same thing. Um, so I reached out to Goto, and I got the exact same bridge, the you know, the black um, Goto 510 bridge, and the um, 
the magnum lock locking tuners that I put on here. Um, it, you know, the same hardware changes that I made to that, you know, Ibanez AZ I did to this guitar. And, um, you know, just made a really, really nice guitar, just, you know, a little nicer actually. Taking a closer look here at the tuners that I went with, like I mentioned, they were Godo Magnum Lock, and you know, same exact tuners that I put on that Ibanez AZ. I kind of lucked out that you know Godo does offer the three different heights because that the original stock tuners come in three different heights as well, um, so that alleviates the need for a string tree, which is cool. And as you can see, I did the same tuners on here. These are really really nice tuners. Uh, and I lucked out that they, they actually are direct drop-in replacement, you know, for the original tuners. No new holes required. That's always a plus. <laughs> put on a Godo 510 bridge and you may notice I'm still using the stock posts and um, the the Godo posts aren't the same thread size so I would have had to pull you know the inserts and I didn't want to do that until I wanted to you know I wanted to make sure that I was going to keep the guitar um, now that I know that it's a keeper um, you know I am going to go ahead and and you know, pull those, uh, you know, those mounts out and put the Godos in. I just haven't got around to it yet. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so I just haven't got around to do it yet. But like I said, now that I know I'm going to keep this, I am definitely going to do it. I, I mean, I guess you could, you know, if you wanted to, you could still use, you know, the original posts, um, you know, the, the measurement, you know, the width and everything, you know, would allow you to do that, obviously. But uh, like I said, now that I know I'm going to keep it, I am going to go ahead and make that swap. volume and a master tone and uh, you know the pots are full size so you know seem pretty decent uh, unless you're a touring pro or something like that I would imagine these pots are gonna last you you know a good amount of time uh, now the humbuckers it's got two of the sire you know branded humbuckers um, that's one thing I should uh, I should mention basically you know everything you know as it comes on a guitar stock of course you know not counting my bridge and you know my tuners, but um, all that stuff is it's it's all made in house. Sire has their own factory actually in Indonesia, so um, they pretty much make everything themselves. Uh, but getting to the humbuckers, when I first got the guitar, I didn't think I really liked the humbuckers that much. To be honest with you, um, I took the guitar to band practice, and you know when we started playing, when I switched to this guitar, um, nothing really sounded like I'm used to it sounding, which in hindsight, you know, why would it? It's a different guitar, you know, but, and my drummer, or, you know, our drummer of all 
of all people said, well, why would you want another guitar? It just sounds like all your other guitars. You know, none of my cymbals sound, sound the same. Uh, and, you know, he's, he's right. Um, but like I said, when I first started playing this, you know, it, it didn't, the sound wasn't what I was, I guess, what I was expecting to hear. So I, you know, went over to my Kemper and started to, you know, get in there to maybe, you know, tweak some sounds. And, and then that's, you know, when he said what he said. And I was like, yeah, you know, it's just it's just a different sounding guitar. Um, the pickups, when they're in humbucker, you know, you know, positions, um, they sound, they sound good. It's the, it's the in-between, you know, the two and the four positions where I think, um, you know, when it's in, when it, you know, coil splits the humbuckers, uh, they seem to get really bright. And depending on what amp you're using, sometimes they can sound a little brash, you know, with other amps, they, you know, they sound fine. Um, they're definitely not the worst import humbuckers that I've ever heard. Don't, don't think I'm saying that I don't like them. They're just, they, I guess they, they just didn't sound exactly, you know, how I thought they were going to sound. Um, I'm sure the way they're voiced will appeal to a lot of people out there. Um, and, and I'm coming around on them a little bit. I'm starting to, you know, like them. I was initially thinking I would replace them. Um, but I don't know exactly what I would put in there, but like I said, the, the longer I've lived with this, the, you know, I'm, I'm starting to enjoy the pickups a lot more than I thought I would. So um, I may still change them out eventually just because, you know, regular viewers of my channel will know I like to, you know, I like to tweak and tinker with my guitars quite a bit. But um, I don't think you necessarily would have to worry about changing the humbuckers if you were to get one of these guitars, um, unless you found that you really didn't like them. But like I said, my initial reaction was, ah, I think I might change these, but now that I've lived with a guitar for a little while, I'm thinking, ah, no, I might not. <laughs> every position um yeah of course that means we're going to do the same riff that we always do among some others <laughs>
if you made it this far in the video, one, I want to thank you. I really appreciate it. And two, you'll you'll see that I've come to the same conclusion that the vast majority of people come to that check out Sire Guitars and that this is a really great guitar. Now, notice I didn't say this is a great guitar for the money, which it is. But this is a great guitar, period. Um, the quality and the fit and finish of this guitar, I, I would put this against the guitar in the $1,500 to $2,000 price range. Honestly, it's it's that good. Um, you know, it's just a fantastically made guitar. And like I said, the fit and finish is great. Um, as it comes, you know, with the normal hardware on it, you know, I changed mine, obviously. But even as it comes you know, right out of the box, uh, you don't have to do anything to this guitar, really. Um, it was set up nice. Like I said, the fret work on this guitar is fantastic. Uh, that in combination with, you know, what they call their edgeless you know, rolled edge here. Um, just makes for a super comfortable neck. Very, very nice. Now, these aren't, you know, quote unquote, cheap guitars. Uh, they are they are on the less expensive end of the spectrum, for sure. But just really, really blown away by, you know, the quality that you get. You know, to give you an example, um, the Ibanez AZ that I've mentioned a couple times in this video, I would totally put this guitar, you know, up against that guitar. It would hang with that, no problem. So I'm going to put um, some affiliate links for Sweetwater down below uh, so you can check the guitars out. Sweetwater is a good place to check out Sires. Uh, they seem to be keeping a you know good amount of them in stock now. And um, I think sometimes there's even you know a few demos on there. So you can you know, maybe get one of those, save a little bit of money. Uh, Sweet, you know, like I said, Sweetwater is a good place to get one of these. Uh, you know, they have a good selection of them. Uh, the return policy is good if you would have to you know return it. Um, happy to report, though, that this T7 is a keeper. I want to thank you guys for checking it out with me. We'll see you next time.